Hey guys, it's Denise, Bianca, and Allison here to teach you about Chapter 11, The Fundamentals of the Nervous System. The nervous system has three overlapping functions, the first being sensory input, which brings info into your brain and spinal cord. This is afferent, meaning that it brings info into the central nervous system. The second function is integration. This is the central nervous system deciding what to do about the incoming information. The last function is motor output, which is the response. It's efferent, aka bringing the information out of the CNS. The nervous system has two subdivisions, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system contains our brain and spinal cord. In the nervous system, there are cells that help support neurons called neuroglia. Neuroglia are the smaller cells that are associated with the neurons. They are supporting cells that help neurons do their job. In the nervous system, there are four types. The first one is astrocytes. They are the most common type of glial cells, and their processes cling to neurons that regulate the chemical environment. They respond to nerve impulses and release neurotransmitters. The third one is ependymal cells, where they can range from squamous to columnar shape, and sometimes they have cilia. They line the central cavities of the brain and the spinal cord where cerebral spinal fluid is filled to help cushion them. The next one is microglia cells. They are defense cells that monitor the neurons' health and when they see an injury. Oligodendrites. They have fewer processes than others and they form a myelin layer by wrapping the processes around the nerve fibers. The peripheral nervous system is composed of cranial nerves, spinal nerves, and sensory receptors, and have two functional subdivisions, sensory and motor. There are two types of neuroglia in the peripheral nervous system, satellite cells and Schwann cells. Satellite cells support neurons by wrapping around the cell body, and Schwann cells make the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system. They surround all the nerve fibers, and they are very important for regeneration of damaged peripheral nerve fibers. Neurons are nerve cells. They are parts of the nervous system and billions of these form messages as nerve impulses, which go from one part of the body to another. The neuron's functional characteristics is that they have the ability to conduct impulses, they have extreme longevity or lifetime, they are mitotic and they do not divide, and they have a high metabolic rate, which they need oxygen and glucose. The neuron consists of the dendrite, the nucleus, cell body, node of Rainver, Schwann cell, myelin sheath, axon, and axon terminal. The three functional components of neurons is input region, which consists of the dendrites and the cell body, is where the information comes in messages, the conducting region, which is away from the cell body and along the plasma membrane, which carries messages and electrochemical messages, secretory region, which is nerve impulses, are generated at the initial segment of the axon and along the axon to the axon terminal. The cell body consists of missile bodies, the nucleolus, mitochondria, the nucleus, Golgi apparatus, axon hillock, and neurofibrils. Missile bodies synthesize proteins, neurofibrils and neurofilaments keep the cell shape and also form a network through the cell body. The axon hillock decides whether to send a nervous message and the nuclei is in the central nervous system and the ganglia is in the peripheral nervous system. Electrochemical gradients. There are passive channels and active channels. Passive channels, also known as leakage channels, are open all the time. Active channels, also known as gated channels, given that they open and close, usually given by a signal. Chemically gated are when neurotransmitters make them open, and filters gated usually have to be shocked to open or an electrical charge makes them. The resting membrane potential. The resting membrane potential occurs because of leakage channels. There is an unequal distribution of ions across the plasma membrane. There are different ions in different places around the axon hillock. The sodium potassium pump moves molecules from a high concentration to a low concentration. It runs on ATP and it moves three sodium out and two potassium ions in.
Potassium diffuses easier out of the cell compared to sodium. The sodium-potassium pump stabilizes the resting membrane potential. Membranes that act as signals. Depolarization is the reduction in membrane potential. Hyperpolarization is the increase in membrane potential and keep the resting membrane potential negative. Types of signals. There are grade potentials and action potentials. Grade potentials can either be hyperpolarization or depolarization, and also dendrites hold grade potentials. They can either be very strong or very weak. Action potentials are nerve impulses and they are only in axons. In order to create action potential in axons, you have to depolarize the axon hillock to negative 55 millivolts. A resting membrane potential is always at negative 70 millivolts, and the threshold to create the potential would be negative 55 millivolts. The start of an action potential begins in its resting state of negative 70 millivolts, and this is where the voltage gates are closed. When you have to depolarize the axon hillock, the sodium gates open. From the threshold of negative 55 millivolts, the action potential will spike. Repolarization causes a decrease in sodium permeability and an increase in potassium permeability. The synapse. A synapse is a junction that mediates information transfers from one neuron to another effector cell. The neuron conducting impulses toward the synapse is the presynaptic neuron, and the neuron transmitting the electrical signal away from the synapse is the postsynaptic neuron. One sends while the other receives. There are two types of synaptic neurons, as well as two types of synapses, chemical and electrical. Electrical synapses are far less common than chemical synapses and consist of gap junctions. They allow ions and small molecules to flow from one neuron to another. They are electrically coupled, meaning that their transmission across the synapse is very rapid. They are very abundant in embryonic tissue, but later are replaced by chemical synapses. Chemical synapses are specialized to allow the release and reception of chemical messengers known as neurotransmitters. Some examples include serotonin, which plays a role in our sleep and appetite, and our feel-good neurotransmitter, dopamine. Chemical synapses are composed of two parts, the first part being the knob-like axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron, which contains the membrane-bound sacs called synaptic vesicles. Each synaptic vesicle contains thousands of neurotransmitters. The second part is the receptor region at the postsynaptic neuron's membrane, usually including the cell body and dendrites. The pre- and postsynaptic membranes are separated by the synaptic cleft, a fluid-filled space. Now that you know the different types of synaptic neurons and synapses, let's talk about how information is transferred across chemical synapses. This transfer of information would be considered excitatory, which occurs at the postsynaptic membrane. It depolarizes the axon hillock, which makes it more likely to fire. In some cases, the axon hillock would hyperpolarize or make it less likely to fire. That would be inhibitory. The first step of the transfer of information across a chemical synapse is that the action potential arrives at the axon terminal, which causes the axon hillock to depolarize. Sodium and calcium channels open, and during this time, calcium floods down the electrochemical gradient into the terminal. This entry causes synaptic vesicles to release neurotransmitter by exocytosis into the synaptic cleft. Neurotransmitters diffuse across the cleft and bind to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. The binding of neurotransmitters open ion channels caused by the receptor changing its shape. Graded potentials are then created. After a graded potential is made, neurotransmitter effects are terminated. They're usually broken down by enzymes, a process called degradation. Neural transmission across a chemical synapse is slower because it reflects the time required for neurotransmitters to be released, diffuse across the cleft, and bind to receptors. Thanks for watching!